You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you for joining us for this episode 959. Boy, we are getting close to that thousand. That's uh, we really need to plan something crazy. for that. Crazy, I know. We keep saying that, and uh, we will. We will. How about a trip to Hawaii? Because I'm exhausted. I think <laughs> I. You bring up trips to Hawaii often. I do. <laughs> I sure do. It's just, probably means we got to get you to Hawaii somehow. <laughs> I didn't really do anything special for my 30th birthday, so maybe I'll just. 31, we'll have a good time. Yeah, I gotta say, man. Do you really need an excuse to go to Hawaii? Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, welcome to another great episode. Today we're gonna be talking about why the surveying industry is just prone for complete uh, disruption. And uh, we have a question today about some of the information that we have seen from our students, our partners and program leads concerning how often they're finding inaccurate surveys. And we can't really give a definitive number on the number of inaccurate surveys that we've seen or how inaccurate they are, but what we can talk about is in general the inaccuracies and I believe where they're stemming from Hmm. and how human nature affects that and how drones can uh, solve that problem just because of perspective. So really, and what does what does inaccurate even mean? What is that being a foot off or twenty feet off? And well, and it could be square feet too, because mm-hmm. a lot of times I think in these, in, and we're, we'll get into it a lot of, in these surveys, is you just have people who are pressed to, you know, get a certain number of property surveys during a day, and they may not be able to even reach one of the property markers, and they think that the corner of the survey is just off a little bit. And here's the thing. I think drone surveying could literally be one of the largest economic drivers for any particular state. Do you know why? No. Let's take New Mexico as an example. Okay. How many houses do you know that have like casitas on Airbnb, but then you go into their property surveys or mortgage surveys from 10 years ago and there's no casita on the property? Mm. How much tax is being lost like that. I mean, in New Mexico, we're a really poor state. Okay, let's just yeah. be real here. So right? all that tax revenue really matters. It really does. I mean, it and I'm not trying to be like, but... I'm not trying to be like, tax the man. I'm not, right. I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm going after. I'm just saying that there are systems in place to try to help support society. And I think that we need to support society. So that being said, uh, we're going to be talking about where errors have been seen in surveys and why drones are prone to disrupt the surveying industry as a whole. Well... I'm listening to the guy from Trinidad, Tobago, on your answer, and I would have said no, based on the fact that you said that these alta surveys, almost one, what, 30% of them are, are not good. I don't know what that really means. But why use historical data that may be faulty and just say, no, it's best to get out there and do it right. If, if you're doing something that's survey grade. That's just an opinion. But I wonder if you could, um, my honey says she's going to pay for me to my membership, but I wonder if you could, what is the um, alter surveys? I mean, are they off by a millimeter, a centimeter, or the average, you know, talking about you know, these surveys that you say are off uh, three out of ten, and, and I no doubt you're right. How much are they off? I mean, is the average survey off a millimeter, a foot, a mile, a centimeter? Are they off half an inch, 12 and a half centimeters? Where are they? I mean, 12 and a half millimeters. It would be good to know because um, if they're only off a little bit, that's not so bad. But I was reading one guy's report on a survey, and he said, he said that he found them 20 to 50 feet off the angles and the lines to that they had put down would lead you 20 to 50 feet off what the actual survey probably was. That's pretty significant if you look at the area, depending on the size of the plot. So you guys are doing a good job. Keep it up, guys. And hopefully my membership should give it to me for my birthday. I love that. Randy, thank you for the question. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he said my honey is going to pay for my membership. So did you hear that? Mm-hmm. 
I think that's awesome. I hope your honey paid for your membership. I was about to say something, but I was like, no, I probably shouldn't make that <laughs> comment. <laughs> Maturity. Boom. <laughs> We're getting older here, Rob. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Geez. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, it really is an interesting question, and circumstances obviously matter. So, for example, he said that there was an example that he was aware of that was 20 to 50 feet off. But if it's a 1,000-acre plot, that doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, it could be really off, you know. Yeah. Um, in our class, we talk about how accurate can your maps essentially be when you have geotags, uh, when you don't have geotags, when you have geotags and GCPs, and how essentially your accuracy becomes a multiple of your ground sampling distance. And you got to understand too, ground sampling distance is a factor of three different things, and we talk about that uh, in our mapping class as well. Um, it's also really important to understand how GSD is calculated because there is only one drone on the market that is truly calibrated um, to be accurate to essentially a centimeter, and that is the P4RTK, mm -hmm. because the sensor itself is calibrated in position for focal length. So um, that's really important to understand. Now, let's talk about why, why are surveyors seeing error in 3 out of 10? Now, I said that because two particular clients mentioned that to me individually of one another. Clients, they were surveyors or? Jason and one other guy. Okay. Yeah. So what he explained to me too, and I saw this in real life because I spent a few days with, with Jason. I wanted to really see like what are the problems that they're dealing with? What are the efficiency issues they're seeing? And what I saw is that oftentimes you can have these properties, especially on the East Coast where, you know, vegetation, you know, grows a little bit more than it does out here. <laughs> just a little um, bit. Just a little bit. Um and surveyors are, you know, pressed all the time. And I'm not talking about surveyors. I'm talking about surveyors lackeys. Well, maybe lackeys isn't a good word, but uh, associates that go out and they don't, have, they don't have surveyors licenses, but they're out there pulling the points. They're checking the corners. They're getting some measurements around the house to verify the structure on the survey to provide to the government essentially to be able to sell the house. That being said, there's often times where people cannot find um, survey markers. They're being pressed for time. They don't want to lay their own survey marker and pull that point because they physically can't get back to the corner of this property to pull that particular point and ensure that it is actually where they say it is. So what I was shown was that so many surveys are wrong because surveyors are simply just too lazy or are inhibited to navigate the area to go find the little rebar in the ground. So oftentimes corners of these properties are literally like just cut off. And it's, it's, it's not much, it's not a, you know, a big inaccuracy. It's right. just essentially shaving off 15 square feet of your property, but 15 square feet of your property could, you know, that could have some effect on your taxes, the different brackets in which your property taxes fall under. It depends on what state you live in. But oftentimes, you know, talking about inaccuracies, when we're saying that surveying is, is just primed to be disrupted, it's because surveyors for decades have been sending other people out to go pull points, do a specific workflow. I mean, like literally talking about inaccuracies, I watched some guys doing some elevations out here for that new WEX that they're building on Paseo. Mm -hmm. And I watched the guy pull a point and then stick, you know, one of those markers in the ground, um, the wooden markers and nail it into the ground. And I watched the ground captate about an inch right there in that particular point. And it was just like, it made me think, I'm like, this is so freaking inaccurate. And the guy's just like literally like writing down the elevation off of, you know, off of the unit itself. And I was like, no wonder why surveying is primed to be disrupted. You have a bunch of old guys with their freaking notepads pulling points with a $30,000 unit, and they are just physically writing down the z-axis in multiple different points. They're creating this little drawing that takes forever. Meanwhile, drone pilot lays out a few arrow points, marks it with a GS-18 or you know some G7X or RS-10 from Trimble, and then flies it in 15 minutes. They process it, voila, much more accurate, much faster. Results can be delivered in a digital format to anyone who needs them. Like you're creating layers of efficiency, mm -hmm. layers of efficiency. One, delivering it, right? You can deliver it to multiple people. Two, it can be viewed in the cloud remotely. Three, cut and fills can be calculated within those elevations. So instead of him just giving elevations and someone going around and like doing the math to say, oh, this is how much dirt we have to move. 
like literally the, the drone flies it, you run through the process three, right. create your index maps and say, oh, you want to know how much dirt this is? Click, 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 compute. Yeah, and you're mitigating against human error, of course, exactly. right? Exactly. It seems as though if you're so like Jason and... Because a drone in that corner, sorry to interrupt you, but a drone in that corner example, it's going to see the corner. Exactly. You know, it, it's yeah. not going to cut the corner off because the drone was like, you know, I just really don't feel like trying to go back there today. Well, and on, <laughs> right. and on top of that, when you start writing things down and hand drawing maps and so forth and hand drawing diagrams, error is inevitable, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, I mean, if you're a surveying company, kind of like the group out in, in Florida, who sees what's possible and frankly, what's coming, man, this is an opportunity to make your enterprise much more efficient and then just go get more business. Yeah. Right, because I would imagine the margins are going to be even better because of the time that you're going to save. So you can save people money, make bigger margins, and do more business. True, 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 true. Sounds like a no-brainer. I mean, I agree. I agree. I'm really excited to get our precision surveying class done, um, but we're just getting started on it. So anyway. Yeah, so specifically to this gentleman's question, um, the amount of air, it just, it really depends on... It can be as little as a few inches, it can be off a few feet, it can be yeah. off a few square feet because instead of drawing a corner, they're drawing a polygon and they're just cutting off the corner. So we can't sit here and be like, it's always off by 24.54 feet each time. Like, <laughs> that's, no, no. No, I can't say that. Like, right, it, it depends. It's like, and I know some surveyors have been trying to trap me in some questions. You know, one one particular person said, "Paul, you're talking a lot about the surveying industry, and you have a lot of older guys who are either going to be super protective of this industry, or you're going to have the older guys who realize that over the last 30, 40 years, they have created a systemic issue and problems based off of how they run their businesses to scale and create volume. And they will just understand that drones will help eliminate the error that they have essentially created in the workflows that have been developed over the last 30 years. I mean, it, it's very simple. It's not hard math. There's not a lot of science that goes into it. We're all freaking human. We all make errors. When you write things down in cursive, you're going to get some things messed up, okay? <laughs> an eight may look like a three. It may look like an E. I don't know. Yeah, and, and like so many things in defense of the industry, there things are being built, property is being owned, and there haven't been any major issues on a mass scale, right? But there are ways to improve and to make it more efficient. And that's what's happening. And, and that's a good thing. Would you say that anyone who's always willing and open to push the envelope and further create efficiencies in their businesses will always be more successful? Without question. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, again, a no brainer to reuse that phrase. And so these old guys <laughs> that you keep referring to, whether they're old or young, they're Luddites. Do you like that, Gunther? You know who you are. <laughs> so that is the word that is now replacing geriatric. geriatric in Thank case you, you were wondering. Yes, Gunther was. I think Gunther was worried. He Gunther was at our last class, and that's his. That's his show name. He he made sure that I don't mention his real name. So Gunther his is his show name. <laughs> okay, his alias. Uh, um, it, yes. Nice. Um, and he was like, I don't think you're trying to say geriatric. He's like, I get what you're saying about geriatric, right? Old, unwilling to change, hates the world. Hates now, new technology. Yes. Big part of it, yeah. Yes, and he's like, I think what you're trying to say is Luddite. And I was like, and I literally like stopped class and Googled the word <laughs> like, immediately. <laughs> and now you're using it. Yes. So that's probably actually a good thing. But and by the way, Gunther, if you're listening to the show... I did post that picture of you uh, on Facebook. So uh, if, if you're not on Facebook, I found out a lot of the people that go to our mapping classes don't have Facebook accounts, um, which I found interesting. And I said, well, if you want to get in the community and, and, and learn up, you should probably make one. Absolutely. And we've had folks, uh, by the way, if you're a member and you don't have a Facebook account, and therefore you're not in the community because we've had people reach out and be in this position We've had folks just create a, kind of a bogus Facebook account with mm -hmm. a bogus name and then get into the community that way. And that's fine if that's how you desire to do it. You just let us know and we make sure the right account gets in there and and uh, we know that. So it works. But then you're at least connected into what's going on. Very few people are in that place, but some are. That was a great show for today, Rob. And I think that 
you are definitely helping some people with that information and greatly appreciate it. And also greatly appreciate a lot of the members that are chiming in and, and trying to change things. So, Indeed. Absolutely. And thank you for the questions. Thank you for the reviews. And you know, it really helps the shows if you'll subscribe mm-hmm. because uh, those numbers really matter and uh, can help us get the word out to more people and help the industry even more. True. And if you notice, we don't really bring on a lot of advertisers. We get asked all the time and... Being that we're resource limited and focused severely on our members, we don't really care too much about advertising. It could be a great revenue generator for this company, but frankly, we care more about getting the right information out. So like you subscribing is like the NPR way of you telling us that you like us, and it actually really helps our company out. So wherever you download podcasts, whether it's on iTunes the podcast app, on Stitcher, on Spotify. Just subscribe to the show. It really, really helps us. Anyway, um, also, if you want to leave us a review and uh, some emojis to tell us how you feel, well, we wouldn't be mad about that either. But on that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Dronio. (laughs) 